Thank you. Thank you all for coming. What a great night. I couldn't do anything to do any of this without my best friend and confidant, my wife, Kelly. I'd like to introduce my boys, Robert and Duncan, who made phone calls and also went door to door and actually gave introductions and speeches, and my son, William, who put up hundreds of signs for me. for teaching me to respect the Constitution, for teaching me individual responsibility as well as what individual freedom is about, for raising me, and I hope doing a great job at learning what is right and what is wrong. I want to thank my parents, Carol and Ron Paul. And I want to thank my brothers and sisters and their kids for being here today. And I would introduce all of them, but I might make a mistake. <laughs> I'd like to thank my staff and all the volunteers, uh, Ryan, Andy, Jesse, Matt, Kristen, Spencer, David Adams, and all the others who have helped me. It's been a, a marvelous ride. We've been a year into this, but tonight's a great victory, and I thank you all. I have a message, a message from the Tea Party, a message that is loud and clear and does not mince words. We've come to take our government back. We've come to take our government back from the special interest who think that the federal government is their own personal ATM from the politicians who bring us oversized fake checks emblazoned with their signature as if it was their money to give. Washington is horribly broken. I think we stand on a precipice. We are encountering a day of reckoning, and this movement, this Tea Party movement, is a message to Washington that we're unhappy and that we want things done differently. The Tea Party movement is huge. The mandate of our victory tonight is huge. What you have done and what we are doing can transform America. I think, I think America's greatness hinges on us doing something to save the country. The Tea Party movement is about saving the country from a mountain of debt that is devouring our country and I think could lead to chaos. We now have a president, though, who apologizes for America's greatness. We have a president who went to Copenhagen and appeared with Robert Mugabe, Hugo Chavez, and others, Evo Morales, to apologize for the Industrial Revolution. They say, these dictators, these petty dictators say, that to stop climate change, it's about ending capitalism. They are explicit, and the president, by attending Copenhagen, gives credibility and credence to these folks, and he should not go. <laughs> America is a great country. It's a great country because of our system, and our system is capitalism. Capitalism is freedom. It means the freedom to voluntarily exchange goods and retain, retain the fruits of your labor. Capitalism is a system we should be proud of. Profit is a system we should be proud of. Private property is a system we should be proud of. But we should not apologize to the rest of the world for our system. In order to preserve our great nation, tough choices will have to occur. So many Republicans have been elected 
and they say, we'll cut your taxes, but then we'll bring you home the pork. It's coming to an end because we can't manage this debt. The debt of nearly $2 trillion has interest of $383 billion. One of the largest items in our budget now is the interest on the debt. This cannot go on forever. We're reaching a crisis point. In Europe, there is a crisis. And what do we say? Instead of saying socialism has failed in Greece and their system should reform and become capitalist, we say we'll bail them out. What lesson does that teach Greece and Europe about capitalism if we simply bail them out? We don't want that crisis to come to our country. There is a crisis looming. There is a debt bomb out there ticking. And unless we make tough decisions, unless we say that you want government that will protect your freedoms, but not government that gives you something for free or gives you something for nothing, then we can get back to what the Constitution meant and what it intended in the beginning. <laughs> Jefferson said that in questions of power, let no more be heard of confidence in man, but bind him from his mischief with the chains of the Constitution. The Constitution was to restrain government, but to protect our freedom, and we've lost that message. It should be enough that the Constitution, if we obeyed it, we'd balance our budget every year. But you've seen how untrustworthy they've become. How when one man stands up, when Senator Bunning stood up and said, obey your own rules, pay as you go, no one defended him. But you know what? When we stood up and defended him, People in Kentucky heard it and rallied to our cause. What's great about the Constitution and about freedom is that it's a wonderful way to live, but also as a consequence, it's an incredibly prosperous system. About two months ago, a local attorney here, Alan Simpson and others, organized a benefit for Haiti. But I tell people, it's not just the miracle of having people who are charitable, but it's we have this incredible wealth because of our system. We need to be proud of capitalism. You don't see Cuba having the immense wealth we have. They can't help anyone in need. We can help people in need because of our system. But we have to understand it. When we had a crisis recently, when we had a crisis and things were teetering in the balance, People blamed capitalism, wrongly so. It was the government. It's the government that needs to be regulated. It's the Federal Reserve that needs to be restrained in order to avoid these recessions. People say to me, what can one man do? What can one senator do? What I say to them is it's more than just me. It's you. It's a nationwide movement. And what I say to Washington is, watch out, here we come. People are already saying, now you need to weave and dodge. Now you need to switch. Now you need to give up your conservative message. You need to become a moderate. You need to give up the Tea Party. You need to distance yourself. <laughs> the Tea Party message is not a radical message. It's not an extreme message. What is extreme is a $2 trillion deficit. That's what's extreme. The Tea Party message calls for things that are widely popular among Republicans, Democrats, and Independents. Term limits. Go out and take a poll. 70 to 80 percent of people are for term limits. <laughs> Forcing Congress to balance the budget by law. Take a poll. Everybody's for it, but it never happens. We can do it, and it can be popular. Reading the bills. Who is opposed to them reading the bills? Is that an extreme idea, to have them read the bills? 
They tell me they want me to wait to buy a gun. I tell them they need to wait to pass legislation. I propose they wait one day for every 20 pages. That'll keep them busy for a while. Finally, one of the things, because some people say, well, other incumbents will lose tonight. Other establishment figures may lose tonight, but they weren't, it wasn't the Tea Party that did it. What is going on, though, is that there's a movement among the country that people don't like the arrogance, the arrogance of officialdom, the arrogance of power. Congress, we think in the Tea Party, shall pass no law they don't make applicable to themselves. I'm still unclear, did they exempt themselves from the health care bill or did they not? Did they forget to do it or are they still going to do it? But I know one thing, they do want to exempt themselves from the health care bill. They exempt themselves from Social Security. It goes down the line. That's an arrogance that people are tired of. And finally, the Tea Party message says that every bill should enumerate where it gets its authority from the Constitution. I am humbled by this victory tonight. I am humbled by your support. I hope you'll fight on with us till November. And I thank you very much for coming out tonight. Let's have a party!